If you feel stuck in this industry, chances are there's legitimate reasons why. Maybe you missed a promotion cycle. Maybe your manager told you that there's no upward trajectory, or maybe you're just getting passed over for that shiny new project. Whatever it is, I know that you can feel it. You can just sense when there is no forward momentum in your career. So today I'm going to teach you how to get out of that funk and change your mindset and progress extremely fast in your career. And if you're new to the channel, my name is John. I'm a staff software engineer at Meta and I think my career has not been an accident at all. Ever since I became a software engineer, I've been on an upper trajectory consistently, starting at Capital One, my first engineering job. I once even got promoted twice in one year. And also at Meta, I went from a rotational engineer to early graduating and to a senior in a year and then to staff in just another year. So my velocity was no accident. And today I'm also going to share how you can increase your velocity for your career. Now, when you're thinking about career velocity, the first and most important thing that you should really question is your setup. Look around, do a deep analysis of where you are in your company. Who are the directors? Who are your managers? You know, what relationship does your manager have with others? And where are you in the hierarchy of the current team that you are in? Now, I know these things may sound a little vague at first, and it's really hard to kind of get a sense of. Right? You just look at the org chart and you know, but you need to really be mindful and really dig deep here, right? So think about like the tech lead role. It's not really an official title, but if you ask someone in your team, hey, who's a tech lead? Everyone probably knows who that person is, right? The truth is that they are these hidden social cues. So like, just think about it, right? I bet in every org, everyone knows who like the favorites are, right? Who are the director's favorites? These are the people that have the social capital who essentially can do no wrong and they always are picked for the most important projects. And here's something that I really want you to understand. These people that have special treatment, they didn't get there by accident. They most likely have engineered it in a way so that they're in those positions. And I'm gonna teach you how to get there. But first, let's just start by going through this in levels because depending on what level you are, some of this advice may or may not matter. But for completeness, I will start from E3 and at least go to staff. So if you're an E3 engineer, mostly like a new grad, your setup honestly doesn't really matter too much. I know I just said it matters, but for this level, it doesn't matter that much because it's basically the same for every team and every org. For you to do well in this particular level, you just have to be an excellent go-getter, essentially. Your main thing to have high velocity at this stage is just make sure that your manager knows who you are and the work that you're doing. He or she can rely on you and you have good mentors and you just ship a ton of code and that's it. And hopefully you're really young at this stage and you have that young energy. So just hustle, you know, be vocal about the work that you're doing. Don't be shy, sign up for a bunch of stuff and just really hustle, <laughs> just get shit done. So for E3s to do very well, it's really about just doing these things. And if I were to give one really solid tip is find strong mentorship during this stage and then you'll go really far. This stage is pretty straightforward. Now for E4 engineers trying to get to E5 or L5, it's pretty similar to E3s honestly, but at this stage, you have to be a lot more vocal and especially towards your manager, right? This is kind of the time when you really need to take your career into your own hands. You know, the number one thing for growth at this stage is to have autonomy. You know, you gotta do things on your own. You have to tell your manager that you want more ownership on certain projects and you have to be able to take an entire project from zero to one and start building this like momentum around you. And at this level, it's really a mindset shift and it's really to show that you care about doing the best work and showing it through action. And you'll get to E5 very quickly. Now, E5 I think is the most tricky. It is the terminal level and this is where a lot of people will feel stuck. You know, it just becomes a lot more harder to move to the next level. And starting at this point, I think the setup itself becomes really, really important. E3 to E6 promotion is basically never guaranteed, right? You need to look at the team structure and the business needs for that promotion. So the first thing you should consider is looking around at your team, how senior heavy is your team? 
how many E6s are already there? How many E7s? And if you're on a team that's loaded with a bunch of E6s, bunch of staff engineers, there's not a lot of room or business need for you to become another level six. It just becomes that much harder for you to get to that level. You can't really mentor others because everyone's already higher level than you. It's harder to find direction because no one needs direction. So if you're on the staff heavy team and you want to become staff, you probably shouldn't be on that team. The only way to become staff in these kind of like teams is you have to gain some kind of surface level expertise on something very specific and everyone like agrees that you're the lead for that particular surface. And it's so complex that a staff level engineer needs to own it. So it's very rare that there will be large areas where people don't have that much understanding of. So let's say that this like team setup sucks and now you want to change your teams. So here you really need to check if there's an established tech lead. Like I said earlier, if there is already a tech lead on that team, it's gonna be pretty hard for you to become the new tech lead. But you know, because that spot is kind of taken. You don't need multiple tech needs, really. This might sound kind of extreme, right? But I'm just saying that it's a lot easier if you find a team that doesn't have a tech lead yet. Because you don't really wanna compete with someone who already has a trust in the team and who's already well suited for that position already. So just be mindful when you're choosing a team. And the next important thing is to find leaders that are really excellent. You know, you want to find a top-notch leader. And there are a few like very important like things you should find out. You could ask questions during the like initial interviews, but you need to really find out like what their report is like with their leadership and so forth. How long have they worked with their leadership? You really want to find like a group of leaders that have been working together for a while. You need to find a strong crew that has a history of winning and you need to stick with that crew. So yeah, once you find these kind of setups, you join that team or hopefully you're already on that team. And then the next thing is to just earn the trust of your leaders and build rapport with that leadership so that you can start making big moves, right? For you to make big swings on that staff level project, you really kind of need a psychological safety from your manager and also your skip manager, right? Because you do need to take some calculated risk when you want to make that jump. It's definitely very important to be able to do this correctly. So if you're feeling like you're stuck in your career, I bet you some one of these things is probably the issue, whether it's like an issue with your relationship with your manager or your visibility is lacking or there's too much cooks in the kitchen. Like I mentioned, too many senior people already. They're getting all the best projects and you're not able to take risk on big projects, right? Those are kind of clear signs that your setup is not good. So the important thing that you need to understand at this point is that even if your setup is bad, you have full control of your career. Yes, I know your career is not 100% guaranteed. I know there's a lot of external factors, but that's the wrong mindset. You have to have a mindset that I control, I am responsible for my career, and I need to make the best decisions for my career so that I could get to the next level and have high velocity. So if you find yourself in a position where you need to change your teams, change your team, but do deep research before joining the team. You know, find out the best questions. Don't just choose a team because it sounds cool and you get to work on some random thing. If you want velocity, shiny things is not what you're chasing. You're chasing for that strong manager that has good relationship with their managers that can get you to the next level. But that place also needs to have room for growth, right? You can't just go to a team that has just a bunch of seniors and staff already. So these are the things that you really need to consider and do your research on, right? You got to make decisions based on the optimizations that you want to do. And I would say the relationship between your manager, let's say that that is bad, right? The thing is, this is something that you have a lot of control over. Sure, the manager might not like you for whatever reason, but you're 50% of the equation. So make that extra effort and go the extra mile. And I'll tell you right now that the number one factor for most promotion is the manager. You know, how strong is that manager presenting your case? Do they have that reputation for promoting people? Do they have the support from their leads and their leads and so forth? Are they winners? Are they strong? Can they fight for you? 
These are the questions that you need to ask yourself when you're picking a manager. Like I said, not all managers are equal, so you really need to try to suss them out and find the right manager for you. Oftentimes, people just stick with their managers because they're nice or they just leave you alone and you know, they're your friends. But if you want that velocity, this is not what you're looking for. You want a manager that wins. Now, finally, the other big factor in velocity is PSE the performance review. And you need to understand very well and deeply. PSE is a game at the end of the day, and you need to be very strategic about it if you want that velocity. So let me give you just kind of like a high level example of what I mean by this. Projects. Picking the right projects. This is a skill in itself. You can't just take any project that someone tells you that you need to do. You can say no, you need to be very strategic actually. You need to be able to nicely, very nicely say no. And more importantly, you need to know how to say no to the right people at the right times. This is an art form in itself, and it probably requires a whole nother video, but it really comes down to figuring out what your leadership cares about. What is the success chance of this particular project? How important is it for this to be uh, successful? And then are you the right person to do it? How fast can you execute on it? And this is kind of going back to the risk taking, right? There's going to be this sweet spot where it's somewhat risky, but not that risky at the same time. Like you want to find the right plan, right? It really depends because it depends on how much your leadership cares about this project, right? But you also have to make a judgment call on whether you agree or not on this project. Will it move the metrics that the leadership cares about you who are an engineer who knows this from the ground floor do you believe in this project does it align with you and when i say believe i'm really talking about like impact do you think you will have the right impact so these are all the things all the calculations i definitely should make another video on this but yeah these are the things that you really need to think about so that's the psc right like everyone knows there's multiple accesses right you need to kill it in every single one. And I know it sucks to do it, but you need to play the game if you want to win. Now, the last pro tip I think that you should have is find right mentors, right? You need to find a strong mentor who is well respected in the org and they themselves have gotten promoted quickly themselves, right? You want to try to learn from people who have been there and who has done what you're trying to do. Right. And usually these people have like the social capital in their org, right? And they will become a huge advocate for you if you maintain that relation correctly. So yeah, all of these things matter if you really want high velocity. So if you're feeling stuck in your career, I'm telling you that these are probably the reasons. And these are the things that you really need to consider whether or not you really want to take those steps to get out of this funk. Right. It's because all of these things are somewhat painful and it's a lot of work to do. But if you really want that velocity, these are the things that you, you absolutely need to do. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Drop a comment. Let me know if you agree with these. Let me know what kind of funk you are in and I'll try to help you out in the comments. You know, subscribe for more videos like this. You can also check out my videos on software engineering right here. Also subscribe to my new newsletter where I talk about AI and software engineering. I'll put the links in the descriptions below. But until you, I see you guys on the next one. Bye.